Welcome to Private Club Radio, your weekly source for industry education, news and discussion. Broadcasting from Tampa, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, here is your host, Gabriel Aloisi. Top of the morning to you. Welcome back to Private Club Radio here, episode number 168, where we're going to be talking about Google reviews. I'm going to give you three tips today on Google reviews, which will help you grow your membership. It will help you get a little bit better reputation out there in the community, and it will even help you squash any negative PR that is out there about your club. After that, we're going to be chatting with Henry Wallmeyer of the National Club Association, talking about the new speakers that were just announced for the upcoming National Club Conference in Washington, D.C., and you'll get a few more details about what the NCA has planned for that really wonderful conference that they put on each and every year. So if you're on the board of directors, you're the president of your club, you're a general manager, that's one that you should be attending each and every single year. Now, before we bring on Henry and go into my Google tips, I want to talk to you about Golf Club Talk UK. It's a wonderful podcast being put on monthly by my friends Leighton Walker and Eddie Bullock, who you've heard on this show before. These guys are doing a fabulous job, really tremendous guests they've got on each and every month. It's the second Wednesday of the month. So wherever you're hearing this podcast right now, unless it's our website, you should be able to find Golf Club Talk UK. And in fact, you could just search for Golf Radio Network because the Private Club Radio Show is part of the Golf Radio Network. And you'll find all of our shows there, including Wednesday Match Play, which is hosted by Ricky Lee Potts, who's been on this show as well. He just moved out to Santa Barbara, California. So big shout out to Ricky. Congratulations on the new position out there. But we are going to grow the Golf Radio Network here in 2019 and beyond, looking to bring on quite a few more shows. So if you're ever looking to fill some of that time while you're driving, working out, walking the dog, whatever it is, this is a great way to do it. This podcast network, Golf Radio Network. And do make sure that you check out Golf Club Talk UK because these guys the content that they're providing is second to none. All right. Well, I want to give you my top three Google tips today in terms of building your membership and attracting more eyeballs on your club. These were some tips that I just gave to a couple of my presentations on digital marketing and social media marketing. And I think that each and every club should really be paying attention to Google. And here's why. If you remember back in 2003, 2004, when Google first came out, you would search for something. You'd put in your little search query, and it often took two, three, four pages to really find the result that you wanted. Well, Google got better, and it got to the point where certainly every time you type something into Google, what you were looking for was probably on the first page. In fact, they used to have that really cool little I'm feeling lucky button, and sometimes you could hit that button and go right to where you were wanting to go. And that worked very, very, very well. And then a few years ago, the Google algorithm got very, very, very good to the point where if you were to Google something you were looking for, probably came up the first result just underneath those ads. And after that, maybe two or three results down, you definitely found what you were looking for. Well, nowadays, and I invite you to do this when you get a chance, if you're not driving, go ahead and Google something. Google something like private club Tampa or private club, Boston, or whatever your town is and see what comes up. I was surprised when I did that a couple years ago, about a year and a half ago when Google changed everything again. And instead of the ads that I would expect, and instead of the natural results, the first results that came up were map results. So when you Google something, whether it's on your mobile device or it's on a computer, the first natural results that you're going to see before any ads is this really nice looking map. And on that map, there are three or four businesses listed. And those businesses are the ones that have pretty much the most five star reviews. And it's really that simple. Even for someone like me who failed math three times in college, it was very easy to figure out mathematically that the more five star reviews you have, the better chance you've got of being the first result on Google. So if you were to Google graphic design Tampa right now, one of my businesses, Shake Creative, will pop up. It'll be the first result you see on that page before any ads, 
before any organic results. And what organic results mean is people who have spent years, like myself actually, spent years working on search engine optimization, or they spent a ton of money paying a search engine optimization company to get to that spot. They wrote lots and lots of articles. They worked on their links. They worked on their keywords and all that good stuff that gets you organically to the top of Google. But before that now, the map results are the first results that people see. So nowadays you can save thousands and thousands of dollars and time and productivity just by focusing on the map results, by focusing on getting yourself more reviews. This is your best opportunity in history to get to the top of Google. I'm sure you can hear the excitement in my voice because it's really, really, really a special time in history in terms of Google and the internet. So my first tip for you is to get your members and get your guests and even get your staff to write a five-star review for your club. If you can get them to do that and you can get a few of those per week, then you will win. You can avoid spending $1,500 a month on search engine optimization and all of that stuff right now. Just for a very, very small investment of time, you could have the number one spot on Google. And this is your best chance you've ever had in the history of Google to do that. And so I think that that's very exciting. Now, a few few little points here. You don't want to have all the reviews come in all at once because that doesn't look very natural. It doesn't look very real to the user, right? You want to have those reviews drip in over time. So what I tell my clubs, my clients is to have maybe 10 or 20 people reach out to 10 or 20 people and see if they could write you a review. And inevitably three or four or five of those people will do that. Now, of course, a lot of people are busy. And so if you want, you could even write the reviews on their behalf. And if you go up to them and tell them, Hey, Mr. Jones, here's what I wrote. If you agree to this, would you please post it? You've got a lot better chance of that review getting online because they don't even have to do the work. The review is ready and waiting for them. So I've given this tip before and people have challenged me on it and said, you know, maybe that's not morally okay to write a review for your members or guests or staff on their behalf. Well, of course it is. If they're okay with it and if they want to make any tweaks to it, of course they can do that. But basically, you're just saving them time and you've got a much better chance of that review getting online if you really lower the barrier of entry for them because people are strapped for time in today's day and age. But of course, make that personal to them. Tell their story. You don't want something generic. You want something that you know Mr. Jones moved into the neighborhood and he didn't have a whole lot of friends, but he made lifelong connections at your club. And tell that story for Mr. Jones. He'll thank you for it, I promise. And it'll be a good reminder to him of why he should stick around the club. And uh, you'll probably see your attrition rate go down at the same time. So it's a win, win, win. And do that each and every week. And so over the weeks, over this summer, you could easily have 100 reviews written, you know, just a few every week. And you could be the number one result on Google. So that's my first tip for you. But it's going to get even better. So recently I was talking to one of my clients down in Fort Myers, a wonderful country club, the best club I think down there in that area. And they were saying to to me, they were asking me a question, Gabe, you know, we got a really, really bad review on Google. And a lot of clubs have that fear. They have that fear if they're out there in the world that people are going to say nasty things about them. And it's true. It will probably happen eventually to every club out there. But here's the thing. They were really, really cognizant of their brand and they didn't want to engage the negative review or get into some sort of screaming match online back and forth about, you know, you're wrong, we're right, yada, yada, yada. And so I understood that. I I know a lot of clubs have that fear. They don't really know how to address the negative review. So I've got a tip for you and I'll give you the exact advice that I gave my client in case you ever run into this issue, and inevitably you will, whether it's on Google or Yelp or Bing or one other of the search review sites. So here's what I told them. I said, speak exactly to what that person complained about. In this case, it was service. They thought the service in the restaurant was less than satisfactory, and they gave them a two-star review for that. Of course, this was a guest, not a member. And so what I told them to do is actually engage existing members and have them go on to combat that negative review in a positive way. So actually leave a positive review about the service. 
So whatever the problem is that someone talks about, about your club, have three or four or five people go on and talk about how great it is. Because most likely, and I know for sure in this case, it was just a bad day for the wait staff, right? Like that's not the normal service that they give guests and members at this club. It was out of the ordinary. And so that happens to clubs all the time. You know, something happens out of the ordinary and it just happens to the wrong person who is angry and wants to take to the keyboard to teach that club a lesson. But it's not the normal experience that people would actually have. So have real life folks talk about the experience that they've had and put it in a positive light. If you can have three or four or five five five-star reviews talking about that same thing, then real humans will see that and realize that maybe that was just one kind of out of the blue, out of the ordinary experience someone had. And that's not the norm for this club or what you would really come to expect. So that's the way you can combat negative reviews if you do not want to address the issue. However, I would recommend that you go in and thank the good reviews and tell the bad reviewers that you would love to make it up to them. That's that's the number one way to handle it. But if you can't, then have people write four or five real good reviews with five stars to bury those negative reviews. So that's your second tip. Now, my third tip is for the really proactive clubs out there, the ones that are really, really, really doing the work, that want to put in the work to be the best. And here's how you do that. Your competitors, now whether that's a country club or an entertainment destination in your town or high-end restaurant, really anything that's competing for the consumer dollar out there, take what their negative reviews are and say why your club does that particular thing well. So here's an example. Let's say the club down the street is having some agronomy issues. Maybe they had some greens that burned out. Maybe there was a disease, something like that. Well, you could actually go on, have people from your club, those members, those staff, those guests talk exactly about why your greens are that much better. Now, you don't want to throw the other club under the bus. Clearly, you don't want to do that. But you could have some really positive reviews about why your greens are the best in the community, in the county, whatever the case may be. Do that with a restaurant. If you've got restaurants in your area that talk about the real poor quality of service, and they're the ones that come up when you actually Google, you know, best dining in XYZ town. Whatever your competitors are, look at those and take their negative reviews and have people talk about why your experience is that much more positive. So you can take the hot button issues that people are having and put your spin on it of why you're doing it well. And that's a really, really powerful way to talk to a problem that someone's having out there and address it and see why you are the right solution to their problem. So I hope you enjoyed those three Google tips. Those are my power tips for you on how to get to the top of Google and how to use reviews for some powerful PR for your club. So I hope you enjoyed that. If there's anything on the list that you think I missed, I'd love to hear that too. Shoot me an email, gabe at privateclubagency.com with anything that your club is doing in terms of Google reviews or any of the review sites out there. I'd love to hear what you're doing at your club as well. And now it's time for Club Perspectives, presented by the National Club Association. Well, my next guest is Henry Wallmeyer, president and CEO of the National Club Association. They're just about to have their conference coming up at the end of April. Henry, how are you? I'm doing great, Gabe. How about yourself, my friend? I'm doing great. You sound remarkably stress-free from someone who's about to have a a, a national conference here in six weeks. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thankfully, I've got a a great uh, staff here who's who's helped put together an amazing uh, conference, but uh, more so, uh, we've got a tremendous uh, conference planning committee. Uh, A lot of managers from the Washington, D.C. area here, as well as uh, other parts of the country who have really come together to help make this uh, pretty stress-free uh, yeah. for me to uh, to put this together. Cool. Well, it's nice you're having it right there in your backyard in D.C. and so many interesting activities and sessions you've got planned. I know you've got some new speakers. Uh, who, who's, uh, who should people be looking out for here? 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that we always hear, uh, you know, from our members, and especially recently, uh, is the issues that they have with staffing. Uh, you know, a lot of this also uh, deals with H-2B visas that we work on uh, on a legislative and regulatory side uh, all the time. Um, but, you know, our members are telling us they're having difficulty finding uh, staff. Uh, and, you know, we hear that. And so we're very excited at the fact that we are able to bring in a couple of folks to really hit on that issue. Uh, one of the things we're doing is uh, a club staffing solutions panel. Uh, it's going to be moderated by Joe Bendy, who's a general manager at River Oaks Country Club. Uh, but on the panel are going to be Ted Guillory uh, from the Detroit Athletic Club uh, and Catherine Nielsen from Westchester Country Club and Alan Gustakis. Uh, from Farmington Country Club, you know, and the last two individuals are uh, uh, HR managers, you know, at the clubs, and, and Ted is uh, the executive manager of the Detroit Athletic Club. Um, but they've all done amazing things in terms of recruiting, uh, you know, staff and employees, as well as retaining them. Uh, and we featured uh, Ted in a previous issue of Club Trends and, and what he's been able to do there at the club. And uh, the current issue of Club Director Magazine uh, has uh, features on what uh, Westchester Country Club and Farm. Country Club have been able to do yeah. uh, because you know no longer can clubs just uh, you know post a uh, a classified or a uh, <laughs> help wanted ad which I don't even think those things exist anymore uh, in, in today's day and age uh, so it, it's it's got to be a multi prong approach to uh, to go out and uh, and find and recruit and bring those folks in so we're very very excited you know about that session uh, and then a little bit later on that uh, that afternoon um, Dean Heil uh, who is the director. Uh, the Office of Public Liaison at the Department of Labor uh, is going to be coming in speaking to us. Uh, and this is going to be extremely timely, especially considering that uh, last week the Department of Labor, Labor uh, just released its new uh, rule uh, on overtime regulations. Um, you know, and, and people might recall that this was something that the Obama administration came out with that basically doubled uh, the exemption for people um, uh, to be exempt from overtime pay. And so that was stopped by a court, um, but now the Department of Labor has come back out with uh, new regulations, uh, which are better than what we thought they were before. Um, but he'll be able to really walk us through, you know, all of those. But then also they've got some unique programs at the Department of Labor where they're trying to match up uh, individuals, uh, you know, and employers to see what's a good fit because you know they realize that you know with a you know a tight labor market that three and a half or three point eight percent unemployment, uh, there are a lot of people who uh, you know who need workers, uh, and so there's still some you know opportunities to match things up, and you know, also talk about some trends and uh, you know in labor issues and. and some of the technology that uh, people are using to help uh, find people. So we're very excited about these, you know, very specific club issues that uh, that we're able to to bring, you know, to the to the folks, and then hopefully, you know, they'll be able to walk out of there uh, with some ideas, um, you know, that they can implement at their own club um, or even in their own businesses, um, you know, to help them with their uh, their, their staffing shor- shortages. Yeah, I think uh, labor moving forward in the next five or ten years is probably going to be one of the biggest issues private clubs face. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, absolutely, absolutely, and and we're starting to see some things, you know, on a technology front that are are trying to alleviate, uh, you know, the shortages. Uh, you know, and I'll just give you one example. And this is a, a company that is going to be exhibiting, um, you know, called My Goat. Uh, but what they are is uh, they have robotic lawnmowers. Um, you know, nice. you might be familiar Love with the name. The, yeah, <laughs> you might be familiar with the Roomba or that type of you know vacuum cleaner. Uh, you know, that circular thing that just keeps moving around your your floor all, all the time. Yeah. Uh, but they've taken this, you know, same concept to a uh, to a lawnmower, and it's very, very interesting because it can cut at night. Uh, it can cut, you know, in the the rain or if the grass is wet, um, and it's all electric. So there's no pollution, there's no noise. Um, you know, it doesn't. It, it's it's all done by GPS. Uh, you basically build a, a what they call a pen. You put your the goat in a pen. Uh, you put it in this pen, and then it knows uh, where it's supposed to cut and what it's supposed to do. And so, um, nice. you know, it can be a tremendous, um, you know, innovative solution for uh, you know clubs who are having a tough time finding you know labor, uh, you know, to work on the uh, you know the golf course during the uh, you know during the heavy season. No sick days either, which I think a lot of managers would like. <laughs> I know I'd like that myself. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, that's just some of the things that uh, that that's happening. Another one, 
uh, is a company called uh, Tably, um, who uh, it's a very interesting concept where you basically have your uh, what's equivalent to a stewardess's on call button, you know, at the table. And so, you know, when they need, um, you know, uh, you know, the waiter or waitress to to come by, they can press the button, and the person is alerted, um, you know, via an app that's on this watch that they're wearing, and they know to to come by and check. Uh, and it's very interesting because the person who started it was a lady who waited tables to put herself through uh, through college. And then, you know, heard the complaints, you know, waiters would come, they drop food off and then they come back two seconds later and say, how is everything? And then you wouldn't see them again. Right. Um, so, you know, they weren't there when you needed them or not. Um, and especially now with the sor- shortage of, you know, trying to find staff, um, it's a, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to, to make the staff much more efficient, uh, you know, if they're not there. And they also receive alerts as to when the food's ready. And so, um, you know, this is the type of thing that clubs are looking at because they say, okay, well, this could be really good, you know, in a card room where I might have, you know, five people playing cards, but I need to staff it with, a, you know, a bartender or a server just mm-hmm. in case they want something. Um, whereas now they can just press this button or out by the pool, um, you know, if people need something, again, they just press the button, um, you know, or in some of the other, you know, uh, components of the club. So uh, I'm starting to see a lot of things uh, in terms of technology that's trying to help uh, alleviate the, um, you know, the staffing shortages that we are seeing. Nice. Yeah, that's fantastic. I've just been so impressed with all the new sponsors and things coming on with the NCA. I mean, you guys have just done an incredible job and it's because, you know, the education sessions and the, the magazines and all the media that you're putting out there. I mean, you guys really are leading the charge, it sounds like. Uh, well, appreciate that, and, uh, and we we take great pride in that. Uh, Cindy Vizza, who's our vice president of communications, has done a, a wonderful job during her tenure here, and I've uh, been fortunate to be able to to come in and um, you know be part of uh, of her great work, which she's been able to do. And uh, you know we'll be uh, releasing a, a new publication called Club Business uh, as part of our spring issue of Club Director Magazine, wow. uh, and this is something that we're doing in consultation with uh, our uh, corporate partner, uh, Club Benchmarking. Uh, so this will really take a look at uh, you know the business side of of running a club and using a lot of the data and analytics that uh, that club benchmarking has in its um, um, you know in its fold and so uh, that's something that we're you know very excited about uh, you know that's coming down the pike so um, that is true and we're you know we are you know doing some things that. Um, hopefully haven't been done before, um, but then also more importantly, hopefully are really helping, um, you know, our, our clubs and, and the boards, um, you know, understand their role in governance and, and what they need to do and look at to, uh, to, uh, you know, put together a, an operation that's going to be, um, you know, the, the, the blueprint for a successful club. Yeah. And I also want to just thank you from, from myself and Michael Crandall for playing a, a great role in our book with your five myths of private clubs that you debunked. Uh, in the ABCs of Plutonium Private Club Leadership. I really loved that. I'm glad we got to include it in the book. So thank you so much for that, Henry. Uh, well, you're welcome. It, it's good to get that out there. It's one of the things that we uh, we're trying to do on a daily basis is, you know, be that uh, you know uh, you know advocate for clubs as we you know advance and promote uh, you know um, you know private clubs, uh, and that's all aspects. And so you know if we can start by getting rid of some of these uh, you know misperceptions, uh, you know that uh, that people, the public, that especially lawmakers here in D.C. have, uh, we're happy to do that. I appreciate uh, being asked to be a part of that, and uh, glad that uh, it came out so well. And, and have my copy uh, right here on my uh, shelf and uh, look at it in all its color <laughs> it is, it's <laughs> all the <full> time. <laughs> That's right. It's very bright. Well, uh, I definitely recommend you check out nationalclub.org. Uh, learn more about the conference and all the wonderful things they're doing. You guys have Eloquence Magazine, Club Perspective, Club Trends. I mean, the list goes on. So just a, just a wealth of resources, information, nationalclub.org. Henry, thanks so much for joining me here on Private Club Radio again. Absolutely. You're very welcome, Gabe, and we look forward to seeing you up here at our conference uh, in April. Yep. See you in D.C. in April. Bye-bye. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode of Private Club Radio. Thanks for being here with me each and every week. I'll catch you back here next Monday. And until then, here's to your membership success. Private Club Radio is brought to you by Concert Golf Partners, helping to preserve and enhance private golf and country clubs. Concert Golf has the capital, expertise and private club hospitality experience to help upscale private clubs achieving long-term success and membership growth. For 25 years, Concert Golf has allowed private club members to focus on simply enjoying their club. 
Visit concertgolfpartners.com to learn more about the recapitalization process.